we have a different policy, I, I think, than Twitter on this. You know, I, I just believe strongly that uh, that Facebook shouldn't be uh, the arbiter of truth of everything that people say online. That's Mark Zuckerberg the other day before President Trump signed an executive order targeting social media companies. The order came after Twitter tagged two of the president's tweets as potentially misleading. The president said the order would defend free speech. Twitter then doubled down on the president, who tweeted his support for the city of Minneapolis. We showed this tweet earlier. The president offered to send help with the National Guard. He then tweeted, quote, any difficulty and we will assume control, but when the looting starts, the shooting starts. The social media giant immediately tagged that tweet, saying it violated Twitter rules about glorifying violence. For more on the president's feud with Twitter and other social platforms, we're joined now by Daniel Merritt. He's a GOP congressional candidate from Georgia. And our panel of the day, Nan and Tom, still with us. We want to discuss the facts here. These social media companies, not just Twitter, they're currently protected from liability. They can't be sued because they're classified as neutral platforms. But now some argue that they're acting as publishers. Daniel, there have been false tweets since Twitter's inception. Why are we seeing these fact checks right now? Well, I think that they want to lean into this upcoming election. I've had my own issues with Twitter uh, as I started my congressional race here in the great state of Georgia's first district. Um, I, I gained a lot of momentum on Twitter. I went from zero to 20,000 Twitter followers in about a couple days. And as soon as Twitter found out I was a Republican, my entire account got wiped out. And, and it's just unfortunate when the social media giants put their fingers on the scales of these upcoming elections. And it's sad, and I think the president made the right call. He's not taking away their ability to operate. You know, he's just making them, you know, liable for people like me to sue, to sue them. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to share with you all three right now what we're just getting into the newsroom. One minute ago, the president tweeting, revoke 230. Tom, we know that this... This law here, this 1996 federal law, is what these social media platforms had relied on before to get away with, with people to comment what they please and the companies to not be held responsible for it. But now it seems when you're taking on that role as a publisher, that law might not benefit you. Well, so certainly, Emma, look, look at the first point you made. It was a 1996 law. We're now in 2020. Look how far these platforms have grown and actually how they're really abusing the power that Congress gave them with respect to being protected from, you know, lawsuits having immunity. They are certainly not a platform. They are operating as a publisher. We saw that over the last couple of days when, for some really strange and bizarre reason, Mr. Dorsey at Twitter is targeting the president of the United States, of all people, but yet they allow communist China on Twitter to make wild claims that the United States was responsible for the the coronavirus. So there's a clear political bias. The individual at Twitter, I believe, who's responsible for monitoring speech has been shown in his own tweets really to be an extreme Democrat leftist. So these companies really do need to be challenged. They really do need to be affect the American people, really have to have an opportunity to really sue them because a lot of conservatives really have lost their business model because of the throttling by both Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, and we can talk about who's on the fact-checking team on Twitter in a little bit, but, but I want to talk about this. President Trump, we saw that his account was flagged. Now the White House Twitter account, they attempted to retweet the president's tweet. It was also labeled as violating the Twitter rules. So first the president's personal account was flagged. Now the White House. Nan, what's next? Well, Emma, this is uh, I, the... A couple of weeks ago, uh, it, it, many of us saw the internet video of the praying mantis and the murder hornet uh, going uh, against each other, and uh, the praying mantis uh, eventually won quite decisively. Uh, watching President Trump, who is uh, a major uh, reason that Twitter is so popular, uh, take on Twitter, uh, rightly for its lack of neutrality, its bias is quite clear. Uh, makes for a fascinating public 
uh, debate about the role of media, the responsibility of citizens, the role of the federal government uh, in the protection of our First Amendment rights. Uh, but that said, Twitter is a private entity. Should it be receiving, should any of these social media giants be uh, receiving uh, protection against liability since they really are not neutral platforms? I think that is a legitimate question, and that is one that the president and particularly Attorney General Barr, who is, of course, the legal authority here, uh, have brought up. Uh, and, and this is uh, the key, I think, that the president wants brought into the public debate more than anything else. He wants to emphasize that these platforms are not neutral, uh, that conservative yeah. voices are being suppressed uh, or thwarted. Yeah. Uh, and that said, there are other platforms out there, other social media platforms on which uh, conservatives may participate more freely. Yeah, definitely. There are other options out there. Clearly, the president uses Twitter, though, to reach out to a uh, huge, huge audience. Uh, Daniel, I, I do want to talk to you about this, though. You know, the tweet it, it, from Twitter, at least, is saying that the president was glorifying violence. The White House responding, saying that he was condemning violence. I mean, who, who's really the judge here? Uh, I think it's absolutely nonsense. I think Twitter is picking a fight that they are going to eventually lose. Um, Donald Trump, our president, has no problem, um, you know, punching back. You know, there's been a lot of talk over the last year or two about, you know, election interference from, you know, foreign adversaries like China and Russia. Let's, let's really take a look at, at our social media giants and, and them giving favor to, to, to left-leaning individuals. I mean, it can have a massive impact on our elections. I've seen that here at the local level here in Georgia's first district in my congressional race, and I think we're going to see it on a national level. So I think what the president is trying to do right this second is, is really level the playing field, and I think that's, that's the American way. That's what all right, we got to leave it at that. We're out of time, but that's Daniel Merritt. He's a congressional candidate in Georgia. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Nan and Tom, stick around. We've got a lot more to discuss.